Welcome to the answer for the first ECG. We're going to keep this simple. We're going to focus on one diagnosis per EKG. Each EKG that you will be provided every week will have multiple options and you will have the ability to choose more than one. That way we are not only testing you for what the diagnosis of this EKG is, but we are also testing you at the same time to see if you know what these other diagnoses are. Um, this particular EKG uh, is a normal sinus rhythm. You can see P waves before every QRS complexes and uh, there is no uh, PR prolongation or QRS prolongation. Uh, the material that we are testing today is if you can recognize these elevations in the ST segment uh, in multiple leads, in fact in almost all the precordial leads here with uh, no reciprocal ST depressions um, and therefore the answer to this uh, EKG is benign early repolarization. Every other answer choice in this list is wrong except for benign early repolarization and we're going to talk about each one of these uh, answer choices in the next few slides. There were two choices on the answer list here. One of them was an anterior STEMI, the other one was an inferior STEMI. Neither one of them is correct because there is diffuse ST elevations in all the leads and there are no reciprocal ST depressions, which means if there was an anterior STEMI, there should be ST depressions in the inferior leads. And if there is an inferior ST elevation MI, you should have anterior ST depressions. And you don't see that here and therefore any STEMI choice here is wrong. Uh, these are not hyperacute T waves because either hyperacute T waves are associated with the ST elevation MI and we just talked about the fact why it's not an ST elevation MI. Sometimes you could see uh, hyperacute T waves accompanying severe ST depressions in uh, near LAD occlusions or total occlusions of the left anterior descending artery. But because of the fact that there are no ST depressions in this EKG, these are not hyperacute T waves. Usually hyperacute T waves are more symmetric, which is not the case with this EKG. And um, usually uh, hyperacute T waves are kind of like a continuation of the QRS complex. There are no discrete ST segments in these EKGs. The QRS ends and the T wave almost begins right there. That's because the ST segments have an elevation that merges with the T wave and therefore you cannot clearly see a, a discrete uh, ST segment there. It is not left bundle branch block because the QRS duration is less than 120 milliseconds in this EKG. It is not acute pericarditis because usually in pericarditis the diffuse ST elevations are accompanied by PR depression in all the leads except AVR where you can see a PR elevation. So you don't see that in this EKG and therefore it's not acute pericarditis. It is not left axis deviation because QRS in lead one is slightly more negative than positive which goes along with a rightward axis than a leftward axis. Um, there is no delta wave in this EKG even though you can see some slurring of the QRS complexes towards the end of the QRS complex. Uh, there are no slurring of, uh, there is no slurring of QRS complexes at the beginning of the QRS which is what delta waves are uh, and therefore it is not a delta wave here. And the PR interval is uh, less than 200 milliseconds and therefore it's not a first degree AV block. Um, the ST to T ratio, which is the height of the ST segment to the height of the T wave, uh, one of the choices that was given was it is more than 0.25 and usually this is measured specifically in lead V6 and we're going to talk more about this in the slides to come. But in this particular EKG, the uh, ST to T ratio is less than 0.25 and therefore that is not the answer here. This EKG shows benign early repolarization because there is an elevation of the J point which is basically the end of the QRS complex and I'll show you more examples of the J point in the slides to come. The T wave is peaked and slightly asymmetrical which is unlike hyperacute T waves which are more symmetrical. 
the ST segment and the ascending limb of the T wave form an upward concavity and I am going to show you uh, what that means in the next few slides. And finally, the descending limb of the T wave is straighter and slightly steeper than the ascending limb which is what makes it asymmetric. This slide shows you the concavity upwards of the ST segments in early repolarization. Uh, this point here is called the J point of the QRS complex and uh, you can see that the J point is elevated compared to the PR uh, segment here. Um, the uh, ST segments in hyper QT waves go straight like that instead of having this small concavity here. Now if you look at another lead, this is probably V4 or V6, um, you can see the J point like a small fish hook right here at the end of the QRS complex and here you can see the concavity nicely uh, like a smiley face um, on the EKG. In a hyperacute T wave, the J point will continue like that into a T wave and not have this concavity. This slide is to show you another characteristic feature of J-point elevation, which is uh, J-point notching, which is the slurring of the QRS complex towards the end of the QRS complex like you see here. In this uh, particular EKG, you see a very prominent uh, J-point notching, like a fishhook pattern, but it could be anything uh, so discrete to something that is so subtle like what you see here, like a small uh, slurring of the QRS complex towards the end uh, that you can see here in V4, V5, V6. Uh, these are usually seen in the lateral lead somewhere between V4 and V6 generally. This slide shows you the three differential diagnoses for benign early repolarization. All of these are based on tall T waves but there is a subtle difference between all these tall T waves. For example, the peaked T wave in hyperkalemia, which is uh, this one here, the T wave is extremely tall um, and is super sharp at the tip, uh, which is not the case with these other two, which is hyperacute T waves and benign alley repolarization. In addition, the ST segment is not elevated in hyperkalemia for the most part, whereas in benign allele polarization and hyperacute T waves, your ST segments are elevated. Between benign allele polarization and hyperacute T wave, as I showed you before, there is this smiley face like concavity in the ST segment of benign allele polarization, which is not there in hyperacute T waves where it rises uh, straight from the QRS complex and comes down and therefore there is some asymmetry in the T wave of benign allele polarization compared to the more symmetrical uh, T waves of hyperacute T waves. This slide shows you the difference between benign allele polarization and pericarditis, which is another differential diagnosis for benign early repolarization, but in this case it is not because of tall T waves, it is because of ST elevations uh, that are diffused throughout all the leads. The difference between pericarditis and benign early repolarization can be seen with this thing called ST by T wave ratio, where you measure the, the height of the ST segment and uh, you uh, divide the T wave, uh, you divide that by the height of the T wave from the baseline. Um, that ratio is more than 0.25 in pericarditis because of the fact that I told you uh, that in uh, pericarditis the T waves are not as tall as in benign early repolarization. Therefore, the ST to T wave ratio is more than 0.25 in pericarditis compared to in benign early repolarization because in addition to the ST segment elevation, uh, the T waves are much taller, the ST to T wave ratio is less than 0.25 in benign early repolarization. Here is a very quick summary of the differences between benign early repolarization and pericarditis. Um, as I said, there is ST elevation that is generalized in both of them, in benign early repolarization and pericarditis, but there is no PR depression uh, in benign early repolarization, but there is PR depression in uh, all the leads in pericarditis and uh, PR elevation in AVR.
uh, the T wave is very prominent and tall in benign LED polarization uh, compared to pericarditis and therefore the ST to T wave ratio is less than 0.25 as we talked about in the previous slide in benign LED polarization but it's more than 0.25 in pericarditis. And finally the fish hook appearance which is the J point notching is there in benign LED polarization but not in pericarditis. This slide is to highlight the fact that even though we have been using the term benign early repolarization for all these uh, changes that we had discussed before, well, early repolarization may not be that benign uh, after all. There are many new papers that are coming out that shows that at least some patients with this benign early repolarization, like EKGs, have a higher risk of sudden cardiac death, and therefore. Uh, this new term called early repolarization syndrome has been coined recently. Well, if you see uh, early repolarization pattern, which is basically a J-point elevation more than one millimeter in more than two contiguous inferior or lateral leads of a twelve standard 12 lead EKG, you just call it a benign uh, early repolarization pattern in everybody that does not have um, a history of sudden cardiac death. Now, if you see the same thing in a patient who has been resuscitated uh, from a sudden cardiac arrest or they died and you see this on an EKG that was done pre-mortem, um, then you call uh, that uh, early repolarization syndrome. Uh, people are trying to figure out how uh, the EKG is slightly different in patients who actually have a sudden cardiac death versus those who don't. At this point in time, we do not have any clear indication of what those differences are. This uh, final slide is to show you other conditions that have abnormalities of the J point or the J wave in uh, a 12 lead EKG. Uh, you have seen all of them, but you may not have related uh, all of these together um, because of these uh, issues with the J points. So I'm just uh, highlighting that uh, when you think about J point in a, in an EKG, in a 12 lead EKG, you have to think about all the abnormalities together so you can kind of uh, put them in the same box uh, in your brain. Um, hypothermia has Osborne waves, which is a, a problem with the J wave. Uh, so you can see here, this is the J point abnormality uh, in a hypothermic patient that we call as Osborne waves. Now, Osborne waves are also a term that they use to uh, denote J point uh, issues in hypercalcemic patients. Now, in Brugada syndrome patient, that J point is usually uh, termed like a RSR dash pattern, like they call it like a right bundle branch block pattern with uh, SD elevation. Uh, but that second uh, blip that you're seeing, the R dash, is somewhat like a J point uh, in these patients. Um, early repolarization syndrome is the one that we talked about. Uh, short QT syndrome are patients that have a very short QT. In those patients, the T waves are much taller, the QT is short, and then you will also see a J point uh, slurring in those patients. And finally, uh, ARVC, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, can also have a J point uh, abnormality, which is then called the epsilon wave, which is a small uh, blip at the end of the QRS complex uh, uh, in these patients that have uh, ARVC. Thank you for your attention. We'll see you next week with a new ECG.